How's it going good people? My name's Pedro and recently reviewed a small form factor PC from AliExpress of all places. This was the K55 by the brand called SGPC and I was genuinely surprised upon reviewing that video to see how much engagement there was in the comments to see that this community's actually really come together and had a lot of good discussion. People were asking things like compatibility with different kinds of graphics cards through to whether or not you could fit different kinds of power supplies in that case through to different cooler compatibilities in this case itself. And I was really happy to see and really happy that I could be involved and just help people out with making the right purchasing decision when it came to this case itself. There was a bigger question that was asked from that video itself. Specifically, it was talking around things like thermal performance in this case, which unfortunately I didn't really get a chance to look in great detail in that video there. Today we're going to rectify that. Today we're going to have a look at the K55 from a thermal perspective to understand how it stacks up against an open air test bench to ultimately understand whether or not it's worth the money or should you just pick up a slightly larger case with better cooling potential overall. So now there'll be timestamps down below so if you want to jump ahead to anything definitely feel free but without further ado let's get into it. Alrighty so now before we go ahead and jump straight into the graphs and look at the thermal performance on that let's talk a little bit about the system we're actually going to be testing in this case itself. On the CPU side of things we're going to be using the Ryzen 2700X CPU so this is the Ryzen second generation CPUs which have a 105 watt TDP and this is running stock with no sort of bumps in overall performance just so that way we have a pretty baseline understanding of how this chip will perform and being 105 watt TDP this chip will definitely be pumping a lot of heat into the system. To cool that as well, we are using the Noctua L9A CPU cooler. So this is the low profile 92 millimeter cooler from Noctua that's specifically made for the Intel based CPUs, but we've gone ahead and picked up the AMD mounting bracket so that way our Ryzen 2700X can be sufficiently cooled by this chip. Along with that as well, in terms of RAM, we have just a standard 32 gigabyte kit from G-Skill. When talking about the GPU itself, we're going to be using a GTX 1080 Ti. So this way we definitely have a GPU that is very high powered and will definitely pump some heat into the system. This is once again, just so that way we can really push the K55 to its absolute limits. And that way, ultimately we can understand whether or not this case is gonna be able to sufficiently hold this much hardware in such a small form factor. Along with this as well, we are also using an SF750 watt power supply from Silverstone. This is one of those tiny little SFX power supplies. Just that way we can have as much power as we need to cool everything and put enough to run the system at full load here. And along with that as well, I'm mentioning the power supply just because it is mounted in the case itself. So that way it will be a contributor to the amount of heat in the system altogether. So I think with all of that, to talk a little bit about effectively what we're actually gonna be benchmarking this system against, we're going to be having a look at this system with both the panels on and panels off. When we go ahead and remove the panels itself, this is what will go ahead and simulate our open air test bench. If you remember from the original K55 video, the K55 is a sandwich style layout so that way your CPU and GPU are separated on two separate sides of the case itself. So that way removing the panels really removes that isolation and any sort of airflow restriction into the case itself. So. This way with the panels on, it will show what the K55 is like in a daily use. And along with that, when removing the panels altogether, it'll show what the K55 is like when it's unimpeded and unrestricted in terms of airflow at all. Finally, the three different benchmarks that we're gonna to run today is going to be Borderlands 3, because that is a great indicator for modern day high performance gaming. We're going to head and run GTA 5 as well, so that'll show a little bit of an older title, but at the same time, we'll still definitely ramp up the GPU and CPU as well. And then along with that, we're gonna look at the CPU performance isolated when we run something like Cinebench to ultimately determine whether or not the actual panels and the style of this case ends up restricting airflow compared to an open an air test bench. Alrighty, so let's jump straight into the graphs out here. So the first title we're gonna go ahead and look at will be GTA 5. And what we can see with the panels on, in this case here, is that the CPU manages to hit that 84 to 83 degree mark before it actually drops off in this case here. And this seems to be pretty standard with this case across multiple different runs. And across the GPU as well, we see it seems to sit about the mid 70s with all the panels on. And then we can see with 
the motherboard out here, it seems to hover and sit around the 60 degree mark, give or take a little bit. And when we go ahead and actually remove the panels from this case out here, what we can go ahead and see is that everything seems to drop a few degrees all in all. The CPU and GPU still seem to ramp up and still seem to run pretty hot all in all, but what we can see out here is that, at least in GTA, it seems that the panels do seem to restrict a little bit of airflow. Next, we'll move on to a more demanding game. This will be specifically Borderlands 3. And what we'll be able to see from Borderlands 3, with all of the panels on, we can see that the CPU ramps up and hits the 85 degrees Celsius mark. And it should be noted as well that in this case as well, the GPU does ramp up and is generally sitting around the high 70s, topping out around the 77 degree mark all in all. Next, if we go ahead and take all of the panels off this case, we can actually see a solid reduction in thermals in the case of running Borderlands 3. From a CPU perspective, it drops all the way down to about the 75 degree mark which is a solid 10 degrees of a delta from a CPU perspective and along with that the GPU still seems to hover around the 75 to 77 mark all in all so we're not really seeing that much of a change on the GPU itself. Finally having a look at Cinebench which is every gamer's favorite benchmark we see that with the panels on it seems to ramp up to the 85 degree mark and sit at that 85 degree mark for the entire time of the benchmark itself. Even when we go ahead and remove the panels all in all, we still see that it still ramps up and hits that 85 degrees and still just seems to sit there. I don't really think that in this case the panels really make much of a difference all in all um, as it is evident that the thermal limit seems to still be hit at 85 degrees and looking at the actual performance of the CPU itself it doesn't really change all in all. Like it is a few points in difference from panels on and panels off. Alrighty, so now we've gone ahead and had a look at the actual thermal performance from this case itself, but let's sort of gather all those numbers together to ultimately understand what exactly does it all mean. So now all in all, in my opinion, what I can tell from the K55 is that the side panels don't actually impede that much airflow. In comparison to our open air test bench, we're not really losing that much performance of the K55. Sure, it's a few degrees higher in comparison, but I don't think all in all it's going to be a big deal when it comes to day-to-day -day use or in a work gaming or editing workload. What we really get to see though is that the case actually performs really well for its size. Sure, you might not have the most compatibility when it would come to GPUs over two slots or when it comes to CPU coolers with a higher height, but what we do get in this case here is fantastic thermal performance. So that way, if you were to have the panels on, you're not really impeding too much airflow. And that is mostly because all of the panels have cutouts on the side for things like the SGPC logo, which in turn help give a solid amount of airflow onto the case itself. And since this case is just using regular acrylic side panels, if you wanted more airflow itself, you could always just design something yourself and get a cut either on a laser cutter or if you were feeling a little more adventurous, get out a little jigsaw yourself and cut it out for you. Or you can just use the stock standard panels because they aren't really that bad all in all. Along with that as well, the SGPC also has a bunch of cutouts and perforations to let heat dissipate through the top and bottom of the case. And along with that, it is raised off the ground as well. This means that the case is going to be very non-restrictive when it comes to airflow. So you're going to have clean air coming in unrestricted through the side panels. Then on top of that, you're going to have a nice easy way for that to vent out of the top and bottom through these different perforations and then ultimately get the heat out of your case. All in all, I think the SGPC K55 is a fantastic case. You get a solid amount of performance out of something that can literally fit into your backpack. And I think for what you actually pay out here, it ends up being a solid value for money for a case that really, really punches above its weight. Either way, guys, my name's Ben Pedro, and I hope you all have a good one. If there are any other questions, drop them down in the comments. I'm more than happy to help keep up the fantastic discussion we've been having. And until I talk to you guys next time, I will hope you all have a good one. Take it easy.